have a low slope roof, they'll torch it or seal it onto the concrete block to prevent that from peeling back. You want to have metal flashing secured inside here. This is uh, riveted in and uh, they have a nice uh, sealant applied to it. So this prevents the roofing from peeling over. Sure. Uh, how high up should the um, flash be in there? Oh, because I thought that was yeah. the sun. Yeah, that's, that's what you see right here. Okay. So when you have this rubber, uh, in, in Chicago, most municipalities, uh, they consider a roof complete with the reflective coating with the radiant barrier. So if you see it without it, somebody didn't complete the final roofing step on that. So and what that does is it reflects the UV rays of the sun. So it limits some of the heat exposure that you have, and it also extends the life of the roofing material so it doesn't break down as quick. So in Chicago, uh, where we're like cold eight months of the year, why do they why do they require that? Like I'm assuming there's something else. Well we're cold eight months of the year, but we still have you know, we still have sunshine. This winter it doesn't seem like we have much sunshine, but we still we still have the sun and our summers will get very hot and humid. Right. So, you know, without that I mean you'll still have the sun exposing the roof, so you'll still have the UV breakdown possibly of the roof. Uh, uh, a lot of times we'll come in if we don't see this reflective coating, we'll actually see alligatoring or like spider webbing of the material that's already starting to break down. So that the sun will then crack the roofing. Oh right. This, this is designed to last 20 years, this roof okay. properly installed. And you know you may not get as much as if you don't have the reflective coating on there. Okay. Plus it'll help you in the summer, you know, even though we only have you know three months where you're two, three months where you really need the air conditioning, um, that heat is pretty strong growth. It tries to equalize the, uh, the atmosphere or the pressure inside that roof so that your shingle is maintained. You don't build up too much heat and humidity in the attic. And there's a couple of different functions that you have or that we can see right here. Underneath your roof, you have something called uh, felt paper. It's a number 15. They can have a thicker number 30. And what they do, that's your vapor barrier. Okay. So when they're installing a roof, in a living space, you want to have a vapor barrier. You're going to have humidity in space. Would you include a radiant barrier on, uh, on the on the outside wall? Inside. Oh, you're going to have in, on the roof. Right. So they're putting up the insulation and they're putting up the paper because it's easiest to put it up that way in the crawl space, and they're they're stapling it to that area. But that's the vapor barrier. So. That actually should be facing the, the living space, the interior space. That's there to prevent moisture, let's see if we have a sample, from getting into this insulation. So if you reverse that, you're actually possibly trapping moisture in that insulation. So, so it's that, not. That should face the exterior. It should face, this paper should be towards the interior. So that's the interior face. Oh, because the moisture would be coming from the inside. Right. So this, how we see the insulation, there should, there's paper on this side or plastic acting. As a vapor barrier. Oh, okay, that's an exterior. Okay. So that you know, and people don't realize. So we'll go into an attic and we'll see it facing the attic space. So obviously, we're going to recommend reversing the insulation, uh, and uh, adding more insulation is typical. I mean, we're we're in a cold. Uh, maybe they uh, have the humidifier set too high. That humidity goes right into the attic space, and because the roof is cold, the droplets form right on the other side. Condensation, exactly, and that'll your look will go into an attic, and it will see mold underneath that space. So then you run into a mold issue within your attic space, and slowly that could uh, rattle the uh, the sheathing, be it plywood or OSB strand. So this might kind of be a, a really simple question here, but if, uh, we're trying to prevent against mold and then rotting of the wood. Is that like essentially what we're trying to do with, with the vapor barrier and all the steps that we're taking? Yeah, you're trying to uh, control the climate within your attic. So, you know, they, they actually have uh, powered attic fans now that you can set them to, say, 95 degrees.